So let's assume today is your birthday and your dad decided to give you some birthday money. And since you had a tingling sensation feel inside of you, you decided to treat yourself and buy a legendary hero in Age of Empires Mobile. However, when you enter the game for the first time, you will be met with the most difficult question for any spender. The fuck I'm supposed to get? Counting your limited cash and limitless tears, Wishing that you never upgraded your iPhone 15 into 16, even though there is basically no difference between them and that iPhone sucks in general. You came into a conclusion that you will only get one hero or your wife is going to kick you outside of your house. Since you are a reasonable person, you decided to go for more, of course, after your wife has kicked you already outside of your house. But still remains the main question, which hero is better investment and why? If you like this type of content, please don't forget to like and subscribe or I'm going to stab you with this knife. Unlike many other games, in this game there is something called a counter system which means every single troop type will have an advantage and disadvantage versus other group. And if we pay attention to what is being offered inside the game right now, we will see that both of the heroes has actually no counter to each other. The counter goes like this. Archers counters swordmen, swordmen counters pikemen, pikemen counters horses, and horses counters archers. And since there's actually no advantage and disadvantage when it comes to archers and pikemen, so actually there should be a competition between both of these. They are completely different, they have no advantage versus each other. So it will come to who is the better hero. And how could the environment or the meta changes the result? Molan is a damage dealer hero and her type is secondary strike secondary strike means every time this sweet lady deals a normal damage there is a chance she will trigger her own signature skill which means if you have something that could make her attack faster or let her have a double attack chance this means there is more chance of her signature attack increasing not only that, her commanding skills grants her 150 initial rage, which means a 66% of her rage is already filled as soon as she enters the battle. On the other hand, Leon here is a tank counter type. What does this mean? This means this dude here has to get attacked in order for him to trigger his signature skill. He has two signature skills here, by the way. One signature skill that is 100% active when his troops fills below 50%, it increases his damage, okay? And at the same time, there is a 20% chance of him countering the damage back at the enemy every single time he gets a normal attack which means if you put him in a group there is a chance to activate this skill multiple of times as for his commander skill it deals this damage which is 240 so far but at the same time the damage increases based on how many troops you lost so there is a benefits here if you somehow added anything that increases the chance of the counter or if you made his troops beefy beefy means more health and don't forget that his commander skill is a fan shaped fan shaped means it can hit multiple of targets and it says here it does hit three targets so basically this guy is good if you are going to participate in a group attacks Since we have already discussed Molin as a starter without star upgrades, let us discuss her star upgrades and see if she is actually worth investing or not. So for her rank 1 skill, it is pure increase to your ultimate 
skill which is the commander skill as it increases 10% damage to every instance of your commander skill and if you pay attention in here your commander skill already gets 150 initial rage so as soon as you start the battle here is a 10 percent extra damage for every single attack you are going to do and you are already doing four rapid fire instance of damage which is around 40 percent damage increase which is good in my book considering the first skill self to be easy to get i mean the first star now let's go for this third star since the second star is bad the activation chance here is six percent and the normal activation of your signature skill is 20 percent so adding a six percent to that is almost like an adding a 30 percent chance of triggering the skill finally when it comes to her last star there is an increase there is a massive increase first of all there is a 35 percent chance of the multi instance damage by 35 percent and the multi instance damage by a 40 percent which is stupid as fuck i mean let's take let's take a look and see exactly how would this affect her so here is what is going on okay signature skill after launching a normal attack it deals an instance of 170 percent which is high now which has a 50 percent chance to become three instance of my damage which is at at this moment it's 85 multiply three which is 200 something add a 40 percent to each of those instances this means you have added 120 percent damage to this crazy shit and you have an already 50 percent chance that they become three instances but now it's 85 percent chance so she becomes even crazier not only that her cards are more easier to adjust she's a damage dealer and everything here is related to damage dealer or armor penetration which makes her very easy to adjust it's way much easier to know what's the path you should be following with molin straightforward high damage dealer amazing investment very nice stats very nice skill now let's discuss leon shall we now the problem with leon that i feel he's a hybrid he's Trying to be tank, at the same time he deals a lot of damage, like hit me and the more I lose HP, I will hit you back with more damage. But he doesn't have anything that reduces damage at all, like nothing here, nothing here adds any damage reduction, nothing here adds any damage reduction, in fact does increase your damage every single time you drop even the ultimate the commander skill increases the damage based on how much you lost through so you might be able to build him as a glass cannon or maybe tanky more trying to make him tanky but again it feels like he's not beginner friendly or you could say he's more versatile hero with multiple builds not a clear path you could say again he is hybrid again let's go and discuss his stars the first star is pure increase to his signature skill which adds 15 percent damage and that's not bad by the way it's high considering that it's a counter and not a commanding skill for the third one increases the trigger chance from soul counter which is basically 20% to 24%. In our previous example, we have seen the chance of triggering of the skill of Molin and it was higher, it was 6%, here it's 4%. But keep in mind that when the enemy who's fighting you is having a double attack chance, this means you still have a chance of triggering the skill faster. At the same time, if you are getting attacked by group you will have bigger chance of countering again comes my problem he needs to be attacked to counter damage but building him tanky will reduce his might damage might counter damage 
because again you will see the problem once we go into the rank 5 star the rank 5 star when his, his basically his HP drops from 75% his unyielding soul which we have discussed from before that increases damage would increase the damage by extra percent 10% so basically other than him getting the damage buff at 50% he is going to get the damage buff at 75% which is again again going to make him more versatile <laughs> once you click at the cards and see what I mean here so his cards has their own counter chance too they have their own counter chance which deals back more might whenever he gets attacked so now you are supposed to build this guy as a tank at the same time he has this skill for example which recovers uh, his troop by armor bonus and another skill I think here that heals his troop at the same time it counters attack there is no clear increase to the counter damage for him this is why I'm saying he's not beginner friendly in my book this is my own opinion by the way you don't have to agree with it but I find him more versatile than Molin which is which is might be a good thing for some people but for me personally I don't prefer him over her and again I will go to the other reasons you know what I know this will benefit a lot of players hence I created two accounts they are exactly the same stats there is no influence by the civilization at all and I decided to give it a chance by attacking one versus one to test who's normally stronger than the other keep in mind combos does affect the hero strength like sometimes hero becomes way much stronger if he's accompanied by another hero but this test just I wanted to show you who's naturally stronger than the other as I have mentioned before we have many features that's not really unlocked yet and could impact how the battle goes there is no combos this is just to give you an idea or basically enforces your decision making when it comes to buying one of those two in case you are actually confused and you don't know which one you are supposed to buy now through the battle if you beat attention she had more rage because of her initial rage thing which gave her a lot of advantage early on but the problem still remains that her Udu attacks are still Udu attacks and chances her signature skill is a chance while she's attacking someone at the same time Leon counter attack is a signature too which requires people to hit him so it's an RNG versus an RNG at the same time if we are going to check the growth her growth when it comes to the skills and stars is going to be way much better than him in my book all of her skills are massively increased in damage or way much higher chance than him when it comes to the star levels which is why I still favor her even though she lost her however what is coming next is going to change your mind massively and will enforce the reason why you actually want to have her first and not him so let us be honest here one of the other factors that would decide if your hero is good is not just about your hero being good it's about what are other heroes people can access so easily that would destroy your hero making your hero almost pointless 
versus those players because of how easy is it to obtain other heroes i mean remember it costed us a dollar to obtain this hero obviously this is not the max level i'm just saying in general obtaining a hero at the start is not really hard and still hero is still strong given the fact that there is a counter system in the game which is why what you are going to see right now will push your decisions towards the archers at least early on because of how easy everyone will be getting swordman heroes which is our test for now how is my moto is going to perform versus the archer hero which we just got and versus the regular free to play heroes that we just got and versus the new bike one hero which we just got leon again which again will explain to you why i would prefer to pick archer over bikeman so you see Mayamoto destroyed leon and both of them are bad heroes this guy is a dollar the other guy is dollar but still he's a vib i said you know what let me try the free to play hero which you get at the start of the game and guess what it is similar results he destroyed the bad hero which he got because as i said the counter system does exist and what it actually decides if you are going to win or lose mainly because of the counter system so let's watch and see so basically Basically, Leon was an equal, sort of equal, or slightly had an advantage versus Molin, the archer hero, but he loses to both paid hero because of the counter, obviously, which everyone has access to, and the free to play hero, which again everyone has access to. Which is why I prefer again archer, because here I'm going to this the archer hero, the one dollar archer hero versus Mayamoto to see who's going to win. Obviously, if we believe in the counter system, then the result should be obvious. So as I said, and as we expected, he is getting destroyed by her. And guess what? This is an easy to get hero for the low spenders, and you are getting a swordman, a lot of them, I think at least three or four, early on they are all swordmen and guess what everyone will have those swordmen and everyone who have some cash might actually upgrade my moto because he is the easiest to upgrade early on but by getting this lady archer if you are going to spend a dollar this is why i prefer her because she only gets really countered by cavalry hero and cavalry heroes at least in our current stage is so hard to get later on when lobo and the mega slayers shows up it would be a different story but for now and for this phase if you have a dollar and you want to get a hero she is going to be your best bet since you have still stayed with me and you did not get bored yet it's time for your reward now i'm going to tell you the favorite lineup which i use it with her keep in mind this is my own opinion and my own testing you don't have to follow if you don't like you can just do your own testing follow other guides but this is the best way i have seen her work and i will explain to you a couple of things to basically enforce what i'm saying here now you see this this is usually is the lineup your lineup is three heroes okay so the main hero plays first which is the commander then the second hero plays then the third hero plays why this is important i'm going to explain to you in a moment so the game recommends you two buildings in here one of them is what we are actually going to start with but it is not the best and I'm not going to use this lineup either. I'm going to switch it into something else. But I will give you all the choices that I'm going to use. So this is the beginner and archer, which says beginner choice. This is actually very fucking good. Allow me to explain to you what is basically the real benefits of this lineup. So for Molinet herself, we have talked about her signature skill requiring attacks basic attacks her basic attacks 
does activate her signature skill but that doesn't mean it's always going to be activated which is why I said we need something that is going to allow her to double attack which comes from the skill skill card you have this option of a skill card which will help her get the chance even bigger that she will have a bigger chance since she has this double attack card this means every single time her turn comes she might double attack and if she doubles attack this means it's most likely not always 100% she's going to trigger her signature which is fucking broken by the way it's super broken which means if we are going to set her with some heroes this means we have to put some heroes who's actually going to buff her chance chance of double attacking or activating the signature skill but obviously double attacking is better in her case Joss does nothing of sort it does nothing of sort. but since she is our only archer option which is decent early on we will put her and this is not the only reason by the way okay now our third option which is the easiest to get again it's for low spenders when you will send me what the fuck why is this lady we had other options i'm telling you this is not the only option but this is the beginner and early option the reason is her signature skill so you see here her signature skill says there is a 16 percent chance for the next hero to enter the double attack state and obtain 38 points of might now allow me to explain what does the next hero means and this is the reason we put her at the third hero so as i have explained before the heroes takes turns this is the first hero who's going to play that is your second hero who's going to play and she is going to be the third hero who's who's going to play but the next hero after her becomes back the commander and the next hero after the commander is Joss, and the next hero after Joss is him so by putting her on the third slot this means the next commander in line is going to be here so there is a chance actually which is low still low that she might buff her into doing a double attack which is why we put her here people doesn't know what is the point of turn order but turn order could be very fucking helpful when you get a buffer that buffs next hero or something if the hero buffs everyone then the position most likely won't matter as much as this case so this is basically the reason why we put her third so she can buff give a chance to buff for mohan to trigger her double attack that's a chance this is not the best build obviously the best build comes later once the wheel activates which is this one again let's keep talking about that one first just why we did big juice and put her here now this one allows your marsh to stay alive for more time at the same time there is a specific card that she has that would actually contribute a lot in your survival which is the following this card after your units basically perform six normal attacks your troop gets recovery by the might since your march itself relies on double attacking and auto attacking a lot launching normal attacks a lot you will trigger the skill a lot allowing your march to stay alive because she is going to trigger this healing and she has another card which is double attack too so every single time this activates and double up double attack activates there is a high chance you will be keep healing all the time at the same time her signature skill is two depends on the normal auto attacks normal attacks it's 25 percent for her to deal damage and heal your troops so she's actually very fucking good until you get the fucking big beast oh Derek I'm not talking about this guy no no I'm talking about the other dude which I'm going to show you now this guy Atil Atil or fucking Atil or the, the Hun why because this guy this guy <laughs> signature skill buffs all of your hero all of your heroes basically 
allowing them to enter double attack state for 3 seconds. That's why we put this guy. And we put him in the second. I don't know why the recommendation in the beginner was saying the center, but this is my own way of building. Not only that, if you decided to make him commander, then this means all of your heroes are going to enter double attack state. And this means you are going to have even more <laughs> movement speed as an archer, which is fucking crazy in my book because movement speed here is so fucking hard. Okay. So this is basically, in short, how we are building our uh, marsh when it comes to archers and when it comes to Molly. And obviously, you don't have to take this. This is my own way, and she's a fucking monster. Literally, I'm destroying every other archer or every other uh, marsh. She's she's seriously a fucking monster. But again, that's completely up to you guys. You don't have you know, have your opinion, and this is my opinion. Don't forget guys, if you like my video, please don't forget to like and subscribe because I have little three accounts or four accounts and I keep buying on every single one of them just to do these tests. So I will appreciate if you leave a comment and like the video. That's all guys and have a wonderful day. In a city full of chaos and a tangled web of streets Lives a furry feline king, the coolest cat you'll ever meet He's got muscles like a lion, a strut that's straight up mean With a swagger 